and all present here this is, this is shantari zoo, zoo educator of arjunana zoological park happy to welcome you for the, the day six session of virtual zoo master program we have students joining our session in the meantime, the meantime let us go and visualize, and visualize the beauty that is in arjunana zoological park இதுவரை நீங்கள் அறிந்திராத புதிய உயிரினங்கள் சிலிர்பூட்டும் சபாரி அனுபவங்கள் இதுவரை நீங்கள் பார்த்திராத நெருக்கத்தில் விலங்குகளை அதன் வாழ்விடங்களுக்கே சென்று பார்ப்பது போல் ஏற்படும் பிரமிப்பு அக்வாரியமில் ஆரம்பித்து ஜீப்ராவில் முடியும் திட்டமிட்ட கட்டமைப்புகள் பார்வையாளர்கள் பூங்காவை இலகுவாக பார்வையிட பேட்டரி கார் மற்றும் சைக்கிள் வசதிகள் இது உங்களுக்கான அறிவார்ந்த பொழுதுபோக்கிடம் இது உங்களை கவர்ந்தெழுக்கும் புதியதோர் உலகம் Welcome back. Welcome, Welcome back. back students. In this, In this hot, hot climate that we face outside, I hope every one of you are being safe and spending your valuable time by joining this virtual Zoom Ambassador program. All your assignments are being reviewed by us every day. It was really excellent and amazing. And we are so much delighted to have such a wonderful, dedicated Zoom batch in this batch. I have a very important instruction for you. On successful completion of this program, all the participants will be getting A e certificate, e certificate and an e-zoo e passport. In, In the e certificate, certificate you will be titled as zoo ambassador of Wonderland Zoo. In the e, In the e passport, you will, you will be getting a ten free visit to a zoo up to a period of one year. So once the zoo reopens after all this COVID nineteen situation turned normal. participants you can bring your friends and family to our zoo and share your knowledge that you gained in this program with them so that is the purpose of zoo passport has been given to all participants to get your zoo passport you have to do a very important thing please kindly note to get the zoo passport participants should upload your recent passport size photograph in your assignment page where you will have a separate column to upload your photograph so, so please, please upload, upload your photograph there to get your zoo, zoo passport now we will go, into, we will a go into a session i will repeat, I will repeat the instruction how, how the session, session is going to be 
all, all the participants, participants will be in default mute option once, once the session started. We request participants to carefully listen, observe the program, and ask questions related to the topic. Participants can make use of the question and answer tab. You can type your questions in there. At the end, At of, end the of the session, few participants will be selected in a random basis and they will get a chance to interact with the presenter. Okay. Let's begin the day six session of African Adventure with Dr. Park Kalingan. Dr. Park Kalingan is a senior veterinarian at Arangelina Zoological Park. He has postgraduate in wildlife science and got a humorous experience in wildlife veterinary medicine, exotic and avian medicine. He has got vast experience in human wildlife conflict mitigation and wildlife translocation. He has been conducted various research on elephants and he continued to work with elephant for more than seven years. Neonatal care of mammals and birds is one of his field of expertise and he has trained various graduate and postgraduate students, forest officers, field veterinarians and veterinary faculties of different universities regarding wildlife conservation, wildlife health management and conflict mitigation. He is one of the core mentor of Zoo Ambassador program from its initiation. So let's start the session Day six on African Adventure Part Two. Thank you, Madam. Good evening, uh, dear participants. So, I hope you all enjoyed yesterday's uh, session. Let's go for uh, today's uh, African adventure. We'll go and visit some of our uh, African uh, animals of our zoo. So, let's start more to move into, inside our zoo. So you can see this is one uh, eagle eye view of our uh, African animal enclosure. That is the hippopotamus enclosure. You can see it's very uh, vast, huge enclosure. This is uh, one of the scientifically managed and designed uh, enclosures of our zoo. We are just moving on. So this is, this is not an uh, African uh, animal, but there are its African counterparts. That's uh, rhino enclosure. So we are just crossing the rhino enclosure, and we are moving on. Now we can uh, turn toward towards our right, and we'll enter another fascinating bird, the ostrich. See the greenery, the green cover in the enclosure. So like we are entering the ostrich enclosure, you can see lots of ostrich moving around. We'll go and have a close look of them. So we are going towards them. Yeah, you can see the ostrich is pecking, they are eating. So it's their uh, feeding time. So like our animal keeper is coming and uh, is going to feed the ostriches. You can see how keeper is carrying the feed for him. You can see lots of uh, pigeons passing by. So keeper is entering the enclosure and is going to feed the birds. And they are sensing the drone, uh, drone's presence and they are like seeing us. They are saying hi to us. So we'll move on to our uh, next uh, African uh, species. The tallest uh, mammal on the earth, the giraffe. So this is our giraffe enclosure. 
So we'll have a vast peak in Xerox uh, enclosure. So this is another vast enclosure, scientifically designed. And this is our uh, next uh, African species enclosure, that is the zebra. So yesterday we have covered about the primates. So today we'll see the remaining species, that is the hippopotamus, the zebra, the giraffe, and ostrich and the uh, reptile. We'll see that later. So coming on to the species proper, hippopotamus. The name hippopotamus in Greek means river horse. So during those times, they will compare the names with their known animals. So they know a horse and hippopotamus are like kindly, they are somewhat related to horses also. And they are found in a river system. So they have, they have named it as hippopotamus, the river horse. The scientific name is hippopotamus amphibious. And the name suggests amphibian. But they are not too amphibian. So some of you will be uh, having a doubt. So amphibians are the animals which live both land and water. And uh, even hippopotamus live uh, both land and in water. And mostly like they'll spend uh, most of their time in uh, water only. So we can say, we'll be asking like we, whether we can say hippopotamus as amphibian. The answer is no. Because amphibians are the animal which have their part of life cycle, which is dependent on the water. Say, for example, it's a frog. Frogs, uh, one part of life cycle is uh, tadpole. Tadpole needs water for its uh, longevity. So without water, the species won't survive. But in case of hippopotamus, it's not like that. So young ones can, the other part of life cycle, that is the young ones, or the other ones, they can live without water also. So hippopotamus are not amphibians. But the name, like, suggests the logical name, it's Hippopotamus amphibious. So they are class of mammalia. They are uh, generally herbivorous animal. They'll have uh, very long uh, cannon teeth, but they are not uh, carnivorous animal. They are pure herbivorous animal. And uh, their average lifespan is almost 40 years. So in captivity, it will go beyond 45 and 50 years also. And they are the third uh, species of animal like which is largest terrestrial mammal. The first is being uh, elephant, the second is rhinoceros and uh, third place goes to the hippopotamus. You can see they weigh almost uh, 1.5 to 4 tons. There are mainly like uh, two different genus in hippopotamus. One is the Nile hippopotamus. As I said, I said the Nile is the longest river in Africa. You can uh, see Nile hippopotamus throughout the banks of Nile. And the other one is like pygmy hippopotamus. We'll see that later. And this is the average uh, size comparison between hippopotamus and the human. You can see how huge its head, head is. So this is the distribution of hippopotamus. You can see here the red part is hippopotamus uh, previous like old uh, distribution. Almost uh, throughout the continent they were seen, except for the Saharan desert. Throughout the continent they were seen, but now due to habitat destruction, uh, deforestation, conflict with humans, like overpopulation, urbanization, this is the green pockets, so only like hippopotamus uh, home ranges now. So like they live along with rivers and lakes, so these are the main uh, places where the rivers and lakes present in Africa. And you can see, as I said, like you can see the big current teeth of the hippopotamus. This is our uh, hippopotamus. His name is Mamburi, our one of the biggest hippopotamus. Now let's go and have a look at our hippopotamus enclosure very close by. So this is our hippopotamus enclosure. You can see one, two, and three, four, six wells. So we have proper six wells because hippopotamus are animals which are, uh, they need water most of the time. They'll be like wallowing in water most of the time because their skin is very sensitive for the dryness and the sunburn. So they are found mostly in the tropical region. So they need uh, water for their survival. So like we are entering the enclosure proper. So these are the different parts of the enclosure. So this guy is Wamburi. 
and the before like old picture I saw to show no, he is hungry. So he's getting curious and this will say a hi to us now. So hippopotamus are uh, herbivorous animal, but they are not ruminants. So ruminants are the animals which have uh, rumen for their uh, digestion. So they have four stomachs for the ruminants. But in case of hippopotamus, they are a uh, simple stomach animal. They have only one stomach, but they are hindgut fermenters. So they they'll ferment. They have uh, like large intestines, not the stomach part. So this is swamburi. Our uh, Management, if you see, we have a very good uh, hippopotamus management. In any zoo, like the management is good, means like the animals will breed there very nicely. So breeding is one of the important uh, factor where we can say like animals are uh, in very good health, like both physical and mental. So this is like valuing uh, hippo. You can see like their replacement of eye and uh, nostril is like very high in the body. So they will always keep their uh, head and uh, head in a very high raised position. So like they can uh, put their whole body inside the water and they can easily breathe. And uh, another important thing is like hippos can uh, uh, go underwater without breathing for 5 to 10 minutes very easily. And this is another uh, nice video. Can see the mother and calf. She's suckling here, so she's drinking milk. And like calves, they'll drink milk inside water also. And most of the times, hippopotamus they'll uh, give birth inside water. Their uh, breathing mechanism is somewhat different. So like it's kind of a sensor they have in their nostrils. Once they go like touch the surface of water, nostrils touching the surface of water, it will automatically closes. And most of the time, of course, they'll uh, give birth inside the water. And the gestation period is almost eight months. And in this picture, you can see like the blood sweat. So people say like hippos uh, sweat blood. They're not uh, very hard workers, but they sweat blood. So this is one of the nature's phenomenon wherein they can uh, protect their skin. Sometimes if it's very drought and uh, they don't find water nearby within uh, some 30 to one hour, Thirty minutes to one hour, like they need water. So during that time, they'll secrete a sweat kind of thing. It's not a proper sweat. Uh, it's a sweat kind of uh, vicious uh, liquid which is produced by the uh, skin glands. They don't have a proper sweat gland. It's red in color, so they have a red color, pink color sweat. This acts as a natural sunscreen lotion. So during summer, we used to apply lots of sunscreen lotion and go out. But hippos don't need that. They'll easily roam around without any sunscreen lotion. And the blood sweat, the sweat has got some kind of uh, um, antiseptic activities also. And as I said before, this uh, pygmy hippopotamus, you can see the change of uh, shape and size of the head. You can see the size of the body. So pygmy hippopotamus, adult, will uh, weigh uh, almost uh, equivalent of its Nile counterpart, that is the young one of Nile counterpart. So young one of uh, Nile hippopotamus will weigh almost equal to the pygmy hippopotamus. So usually the like, um, young one of the Nile hippopotamus will weigh around uh, some 30 to 50 kg and they'll grow very fast and they'll reach almost uh, one ton within a couple of years. So this is the distribution phase of the Nile hippopotamus. There are two subspecies. So these are the two. They are seen very uh, small pockets. Their number is very less. They are uh, endangered animals. Hippopotamus are uh, vulnerable animals. And they are seen in very small pockets. They are nocturnal basically. So they are very shy animal also. And now we'll move on to our uh, next uh, species, giraffe. So when we think about giraffe, we all know like, Giraffe is very tall animal. So we can uh, have one doubt. How many bones will be there in a giraffe's neck? Some will be thinking there will be lots of bones in giraffe's neck. But the interesting fact is, all the mammals have only seven cervical vertebrae, that is the bones in the neck. So even giraffes have just uh, seven bones here, not lot, many bones. 
So the name, the scientific name is Giraffa camelopardalis. They are uh, again mammalia, and they are herbivorous animal, and they are ruminants like the cattle. They have uh, four chambers in stomach. They are ruminants, so their lifespan is almost 25 years. In captivity, 25 to 30 years they'll uh, grow, and uh, their height. People, but uh, giraffes are always known for their height. So the maximum reached uh, record is like almost uh, 19.5 feet in height. And uh, average 14 to 19 feet. There are, uh, we think like giraffe is like, there is only one kind of giraffe, but it's not true. There are almost nine subspecies of giraffe present today. And you can see this uh, size comparison between human and giraffe. So let's go and uh, see the distribution of uh, subspecies of the giraffe. So giraffes are mainly, uh, subspecies are divided as three parts. One is the North African uh, giraffes and the uh, Maasai uh, giraffe and the South African giraffes. So here you can see these two are uh, North African giraffes. Now on the left it's uh, Cordofan giraffe, on the right is West African giraffe. So you can see the um, the patch pattern in the, each sub subspecies that differs. And height, there'll be like slight differences in height. So we'll see like which is the highest, uh, tallest uh, giraffe in the world. And um, these are the Nubian giraffe. This is uh, the left, it's uh, Nubian. And this is Rothschild giraffe. So these four species are uh, not northern uh, giraffe, sub subspecies. And this is the reticulated giraffe. This is again uh, found in the like, southern part of the northern part of the uh, continent. This is a reticulated giraffe. And uh, this is the South African giraffe. So this is Angolan species. This is proper South African species. And in our uh, Aringarana Zoological Park, we have uh, South African species. And the next we'll go to and see the Maasai uh, giraffes. So these two are uh, Maasai subspecies. This is the Maasai subspecies of the giraffe, Maasai giraffe. This is tonic of the giraffe. You can see the slight variation in color and uh, pattern of the patches. And uh, generally, Maasai giraffes are the tallest uh, species of giraffes. They'll grow almost uh, 18 to 19 feet in height, the adult male. So now we'll go and see our giraffe enclosure. So as I said before, like they are uh, ruminants, herbivores. They are very shy animals, like the size is not, not much matters, but they are very shy. But they are very strong animal too. A giraffe's kick can even, uh, single kick can kill a lion very easily. They are very strong and powerful uh, limb. And you can see this is our uh, nice enclosure. We have a good free cover. We have greeneries. We have uh, investment provided. So this is a very good place for a giraffe. And we mimic almost kind of uh, African savanna, the grassland. So we'll we are providing grasses, grasslands too. So grasses are growing there. Another important, uh, fascinating thing about giraffe is like they have a very long uh, tongue. It's like almost uh, 20 inches. I, yesterday I said the uh, okapi, right? So yes, okapi is like. Uh, kind of uh, giraffe and zebra mixture. Even Okapi is uh, got a very long uh, neck. So see this giraffe, she's very uh, curious and saying hi to you. And her name is uh, Aisha. We are saying uh, hi to Aisha. You can see the tree uh, branches, like there's no branches on the height of the giraffe. Like she has already like dosed and like something grows, she goes and eats them. So she's happily walking around. Next we'll uh, go and see a proper a close look of the giraffe. So you can see the long neck. So you would have seen in uh, many like uh, National Geographic or uh, Animal Planet, how giraffe will drink water. So you'll be like uh, thinking, why giraffe need to drink water like that? So they'll spread their uh, forelimb very apart, wide apart, and they, they need to bend their uh, neck. So 
So giraffe has got uh, one of the biggest hearts in uh, mammals. Their heart is very big because heart's function is to pump blood. So heart has to reach so high level of the brain. So when uh, giraffe uh, kneels down very fast or it's uh, pushed down its head very fast, what will happen is like the blood pressure in the brain will be very high and the blood pressure, high blood pressure will make the blood vessels in the brain burst out and animal will die. So to maintain that blood pressure, I mean, what giraffe will do is like, will wide uh, spread its leg, slowly put down uh, its neck and manages the blood pressure, then drinks water. So, so this is one of the greatest uh, difficulty for the giraffe to drink water. So animal can't so fastly put down its uh, neck. And sometimes they don't need to do that. So for that, the nature has provided some solution. There is something called as spambiform plexus, which is found in the brain of the giraffe. It's a very tight network of uh, blood vessels in giraffe. So when the blood pressure rises, the excess blood will flow inside this plexus and they will uh, maintain the blood pressure. So these are the mechanisms, specialties found in this species. Next, we'll see the enrichments provided in our enclosure. See, uh, we are giving, uh, tying the tree branches and uh, taking to the heights. So, all the animals' uh, behavior are uh, seen in a very good condition when they exhibit their normal behavior and not the abnormal behavior. So, giraffes are kind of browsers. They don't race us. They need to browse a lot. So, this picture you can see, in this video you can see like we are providing uh, tree country branches because all other trees you can see like the level of trees have been uh, finished by the giraffe. So, now we can see our giraffe happily eating the tree branches what we have given here. And as I said, you can see the tongue of the giraffe. It's like very long tongue. How nicely it's like taking out the tongue and uh, grabbing the leaf and eating. So before going on to the next pieces, we'll see how they live, coexist in the wild African savanna. See the uh, yeah, natural habitat and our enclosure, it's almost it mimics the same. So these are the plain zebra and uh, the giraffe. They are uh, coexisting. This is a nice water hole. So all the animals are like going for the water there. So after the zebras uh, move away, the giraffe will uh, put on a snake and will drink water. So this is how they coexist in the wild. So we can we are seeing the zebras here. Yes. Next we'll go and see the zebra also. Before uh, seeing the seeing about our zebra, first we'll uh, learn about the species and subspecies present in uh, zebra also. So we all know zebras are species which are uh, black and white in color, and we'll think there will be uh, black stripes or someone will say that it's white stripes. So all are same for us, but it's not true. There are the main three sub uh, species of uh, zebras. On the left, you can see this is the plain zebra. And uh, this is uh, Gravy Zebra and this is Mountain Zebra. So Plain Zebra, there are almost seven subspecies present. They are Cellus Zebra, cross Sea Zebra, Champion Zebra, Mainless Zebra. You can see this is the main. So Zebras are uh, equids. So usually equids have a main. So there's a subspecies of Plain Zebra, which is Mainless. So that's main, uh, Mainless Zebra. And there's a Grand Zebra and Burchell Zebra and Quagua. Quagua is uh, extinct now, so other six subspecies are present. And uh, what we have here is plain zebra, and the subspecies present is grand zebra, equals quagua bohemian. So again, they are herbivores. The previous two, what we saw, they are called as even mega herbivores. They are like very huge in size. Their weight, average weight, will cross almost uh, one ton, that is 1,000 kgs. But Zebras and other species are not mega herbivores, they are non herbivores, and their group name is herd. Average lifespan is almost 25 years to 30 years in the captivity and 25 in the wild. So, there you can see the average size between the 
uh, human and zebras. So as I said, like plain zebra, our zebra is grand zebra. Grand zebra is one of the, it's the smallest uh, variety of subspecies of uh, plain zebra. So this is the distribution pattern. So plain zebra, they are uh, found in, uh, in many parts. They are almost uh, vulnerable. They are not uh, extinct till now. They are not endangered. But you can see this. This is the Ravi zebra's uh, home range. You can see it's very uh, short home range, very small pockets. It's an uh, endangered animal. And you can see the mountain zebras. This is also like very uh, short uh, distribution, distributed area. Come, let's go and have a look at our, our giraffe. She's uh, Tina. Um, you can see the nice markings in the, the stripes in the body. So in giraffes, you can see the patches and in zebras, the, uh, the stripes. Like tiger and like our fingerprint, they are unique to each animal. So no, uh, you, no animal in the world have uh, two set of same uh, stripes. And there is another uh, confusion between uh, in the scientists. Some say like zebra has uh, white skin and uh, black stripe. Some say it's a uh, black skin and the white stripe. Still, uh, we need to come for a conclusion because the embryonic stage of zebras, they have black skin and while they grow, the white marks come comes out because like you can see there will be a white underbelly for the animal. So they say, and in uh, face you can easily see, they are very close, uh, tight packs. So it can be a uh, black skin and uh, white uh, stripes too. So zebras are equids. They are very fast runners. Their hind legs are very powerful. They are, uh, have a very powerful kicks. They coexist with the other uh, bovids in the African savanna. They are uh, savanna animals. So they, have, they also follow a big uh, migration pattern. So here you can see our zebra um, nicely uh, relishing the green grass in our enclosure. So like other any other animal in the zoo, they also have proper uh, diet schedule. And uh, zebras and giraffes are one of the costliest animals to adopt in our zoo, apart from uh, the big cats and elephants. They have very special diets and uh, as uh, equid, equids are all, they are like always problematic when they are not uh, well fed. So our zebras are uh, in very nice good health. So this grasses we have planted in our uh, enclosure. So going to the next part, the bird, the fastest uh, terrestrial bird, the fastest running bird, you can say, a sausage. Again, there are uh, lots of species of ostriches present. It's not like single species. Uh, it's the uh, scientific name is Stuthia camelus. It's a bird, but they are not uh, herbivore. They are omnivorous animal, omnivorous bird. The group them is herd. But mostly like they are not seen as groups, mostly like as a pair, a single bird. Sometimes, during broad season, they'll form a big herd and they'll go on. And they are the tallest uh, fl flightless birds. And the group of flightless birds are called as ratites. That is the ostrich, emus of uh, Australia, cassowaries of Australia, rias of uh, South America, the kiwi of uh, New Zealand. So these all birds are comes under the group called as ratite. So this is the distribution pattern of uh, different uh, uh, ostriches. So we have a uh, few next picture we can see. These are the three different subspecies of uh, common ostriches. So there are uh, two ostriches species. One is Sutia camelus, that is the common ostrich. And the other one is uh, Somalia ostrich. And this is the common ostrich. Uh, red necked ostrich, and this is the pink necked ostrich. Also, this is the North African ostrich. This is the Western African ostrich, uh, East African ostrich, and this is the South African ostrich. All, 
or a black neck the ostrich and this is the blue neck the ostrich or somalia ostrich so these are the four two species and uh, three subspecies in uh, common of pictures so they are very strong birds they have uh, their uh, legs are very strong their kick can uh, cause a big blow for any animal they are very famous for their uh, front kicks they have very long neck slender neck we will go and see our uh, ostriches so you can see here ostriches are uh, sexually dimorphic so the darker ones the black ones are the male and the gray light colored ones are the females what species we have are uh, south african ostriches the black neck ostriches present in our zoo so uh, here like in our zoo we have very good uh, breeding of ostriches happening so in india lots of uh, zoos many zoos have ostriches and lots of farms are having ostriches but the thing they do is like they have a artificial uh, incubation for ostriches but the interesting thing about our zoo is we don't have any artificial setup the female lays egg both the male and female uh, take care of the egg they'll uh, brood it they'll incubate it the average uh, incubation period for ostriches is almost 42 days it is the very less and come when compared to the other uh, reptiles so they'll take care of their eggs so they'll brood it very nicely so you can see all this uh, so this all this whole group was from a single uh, parent 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 this, this batch so you can see here like we feed them here and uh, they brood them nicely and they'll take care of their young ones very nicely so when ostriches uh hatch hatches out they'll uh, hatch out after 42 days they'll come out and the uh, bigger birds they'll take care of their young ones and after from two days like we'll wean them and we have a, have them a separate enclosure and seeing about ostrich we should say about their eggs ostrich egg is the biggest egg in the present uh, world they are the biggest uh, egg but the interesting thing is like ostrich egg is the smallest egg when compared to its body size when compared to like any animal any birds when compared to the body size ostrich egg is smallest so it's like the ratio 1 is to 100 say chicken eggs it will be like 2 is to 100 so they are bigger than ostrich egg when compared to the big ones but as a whole ostrich egg is like the biggest egg in the world they will weigh almost 1 uh, kg their uh, albumin content will be very high and the shell is very tough to break because they are uh, terrestrial animals they have to lay their eggs in uh, ground they have a nest they'll uh, prepare a nest with the common like they'll sand so sometimes like they are living as herd they'll have a common place for laying egg the dominant female will take care of all eggs the weaker and it will break the weaker female sex also in the wild and uh, another important thing is during uh, day time the in wild during day time uh, females will uh, take care of the brooding and during night uh, male will take care that's because they are color so the pale or the light gray color of the female will helps the mingle with the surrounding and it will camouflage so if it's animal is sitting from uh, far away some predator is seeing so female won't uh, be seen visibly and during night the jet black color of the male won't be uh, seen and after uh, 42 days the young ones will get hatched out you can see the young ones here so from day one they'll uh, start picking so these are almost 10 days old chicks after 10 days we'll wean them we'll feed them uh, in our enclosure we have dedicated uh, staffs for them the keepers so you can see the young ones pecking here and you can see the coat the feathers it's not like for the like the adults it's like a bristles like a hair so these are our uh, naughty uh, young ones young ones you can see they are very playful and in wild like uh, one in 10 uh, one only will uh, survive and cross one year of age because they have lots of uh, predators around them 
they are in found in savanna from uh, mongoose from uh, foxes till uh, like a cheetah lion will hunt them and next we will see a small documentary about uh, cheetahs hunting uh, ostriches in the wild so this is a adult male this is a south african uh, black neck ostrich you can see so a single cheetah can hunt uh, attack and kill a adult ostrich so they are coming as a uh, group so three cheetahs are forming group and they are uh, trying to hunt this ostriches because for cheetahs usually they'll go for uh, smaller uh, mammals say it's the springbok or uh, gazelles so for smaller mammals they'll go they are the antelopes but if they are getting a huge prey like ostrich they'll feast upon very well so adult male will weigh around almost some uh, 70 to 80 kg so like they are stalking the prey but the height of the ostrich is one of the <coughs> important uh, advantage for the male so he sighting the predator and he started the warning sign so they'll spread their wings this is a threat display in case of ostriches so he is uh, showing threat display so this cheetahs are like kind of uh, getting worn by the male but they started chasing what happens is like male is very big for them to hunt but there is a vulnerable female nearby so they are going for the female female is a very easy target for them but one cheetah can't take down our switch here you can see there another friend their friends came to us uh, back of three they are taking down the switch you can see here so during this fight also the ostrich kick can be a lethal kick for the cheetahs so they have brought on the ostrich so one ostrich one cheetah will go and uh, grab the neck see you can you can see here so this is a dangerous blow for this cheetah so he's strangling the animal and they are feasting upon so this is how uh, life goes on in the wild so we'll wind up with the birds and mammals of the african continent next we'll move to the reptilian part what we have in our zoo that is the nile crocodile nile crocodile is the biggest um, croc in uh, africa as the name suggests they are found in uh, nile uh, river and tributaries of nile river and they are even seen in congo basin and uh, in niger river also and they are found in madagascar uh, island also so they'll the biggest specimens will weigh almost more than 500 kg and uh, the record is like uh, size is more than 20 feet they are purely carnivorous animal because they are called crocodilians they are uh, reptilia it's crocodilus nilotitus nilotitus so on uh, land they are called as basque because they are seen in groups only so on land they are called as uh, basque and in uh, water the group is called as trout and as you all know like the reptiles will have a very uh, big uh, uh, life span so this is quite good uh, good years for a uh, crocodile like 45 to 50 years but we all uh, know like the tortoises will live longer in compared to other reptiles and all all tortoises will live longer it's the tame telephocus uh, tortoise will uh, go almost 300 years also and uh, the another important uh, like interesting thing about nile crocodile is like when compared to other crocodile species their uh, breeding ability is somewhat good so the marsh crocodile or the saltwater crocodile or the alligators they'll lay egg and they'll move on they'll move away from the egg and they'll they don't uh, bother about the eggs and the hatchlings but in case nile crocodile they are uh, they have a very good parental care so once they lay egg they'll sit beside the egg they'll uh, roll the eggs because in crocodile crocodilian species the temperature decides the sexing in the formation of embryo like the male or female 
so they'll rotate the eggs they'll burrow they'll take out of the sand so they'll take out of the eggs they'll uh, nest it very properly and then after the yastlings come out also they'll take care of the yastlings so this is one of the interesting fact about the nanpot tail so next i show you a small documentary which uh, shows about a nile crocodile how the nile crocodile lands in the wild this is a wild beast sandlo so nile crocodiles are as all crocodiles they are very uh, like uh, intelligent creatures so they will very nicely stalk they will camouflage they will go under water and animals won't know like it's coming out for uh, its prey so the wild beast are like happily drinking water you can see how uh, easily it got a prey see how the nile crocodile cap on the prey and you can see the size of nile crocodile and the crocodiles have very uh, strong uh, position when they are in water it's like their home ground they can easily win the battle so they'll catch the prey they'll drag the prey to the water hole they'll kill the prey there and they'll consume the prey there so this is the great migrations in wild beast and while crossing the rivers they're getting caught in the and in the background you can see a savanna baboon like yesterday we saw a savanna baboon this is a savanna baboon all is on our baboon so the animal has caught the leg and the group of other crocodiles also will come from and join the bus so in the water it's a float the float will the entire float will come and join and they'll uh, start consuming the prey and i think with this i'll uh, end the session thank you doctor thank you thank you doctor for a very informative session thank you for taking all of us to the african world doctor now we will move on to the question and answer session uh, i would like to discuss few questions that we got in the chat okay the first question is from sharada she okay. want to know the height and weight of hippopotamus and uh, what okay. does it eat okay so uh, height and weight of pci i as i have shown already in the slide so i average it will go almost 5 to 5.5 feet and weight it's almost uh, like 1.5 to 4 tons in weight and they are uh, herbivorous animal they eat lots of grasses they'll graze a lot so they'll be uh, eating the grass which is growing on the banks of the rivers and they'll eat the plant plants which is growing in the river so they are herbivorous animal thank you doctor and yep. eben gunesheger has put a question what is the length of hippopotamus teeth length of hippopotamus teeth teeth yes. the teeth uh, like the canines they'll grow very uh, big it's kind of uh, ivory so it's almost uh, like 15 to 30 cm will grow the canines and they can easily kill a human and uh, another sad thing about uh, human animal conflict in african continent hippos are the most conflict animals and the casualties caused by hippos are like very high compared to any other animal and the next comes the like the even the nile crocodile have got a uh, lots of conflict and almost a uh, minimum of 200 persons are being killed by nile crocodile thank you doctor and we have a question on zebra from isan sekender Okay. you want to elaborate the types of zebra which is unique to each other okay so it's uh, like our fingerprint so each zebra has got its uniqueness so like the stripe the pattern in their uh, how to say um the stripe pattern is different from one another so no zebra like in the world will have so common uh, stripe pattern so like the stripes the pattern of stripes the shape of the stripe the length of the stripe everything differs so that's the uniqueness of the stripes and zebras someone has asked do pandas live in africa and india what been uh, the research uh pandas don't live in africa and india they are seen in uh, china
Dr. Lalit Kanan, Lalit Kumar has put a question. What is altruism? The group difference behavior. What is altruism? Yes. Okay. Altruism is uh, one nice behavior. Right? Nice, actually, it's a nice question. Altruism is a very uh, nice behavior seen in lots of wild animals. It's like uh, altruistic behavior is like helping the other ones without any. Uh, like, they don't need to help, but they'll be helping without any uh, return uh, expectations. That's altruism. See, in case of uh, elephants, they are altruistic. They'll take care of their, uh, not not only their young ones, the other animals' young ones also. So this kind of behavior is called uh, altruistic and altruistic behavior and it's the altruism. And uh, maybe there are many questions on um, what is the difference between uh, North Africa ostrich and South Africa ostrich? Um, the size, one first one is the size. The North African ostrich is the uh, biggest ostrich in the world. They are the biggest specimens. The main thing is like, another thing is the color of the neck. So North African uh, ostrich are uh, pink or red in color. Well, South African ostrich, they have a black color neck, so it's black neck the ostrich. That's the main difference. Otherwise, the male and female will be all, almost looking same, black and gray. Thank you, doctor. Uh, doctor, now we can go to the interactive session. Yes. Participants, sure. now you can interact with the presenter. Please make use of the rice hand option. Few members will be selected and they will get a chance to interact with the presenter. Murli Daran B. Are you on the line? We'll go to next participant who's not on the line. Anusha Kanan. Hello, sir. Hello, Nisha. Uh, population of hippopotamus. Population of hippopotamus. Yes. In the, wild. the wild or in the zoo? In the wild. Okay. There are a few hundreds, like a few hundred thousands of hippopotamus are seen in the wild. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir? Yes, Dinesh. Sir, can you tell how to identify a male and female in ostrich? Okay. I have told that in our my uh, slides also. Uh, the color is the main uh, differentiating thing about uh, ostriches, Dinesh. So the male will be black in color, jet black in color. And there will be the end of the wing will be white in color. But in case of females, they will be light gray in color, so easily you can identify when they are adult. But in young ones, it is uh, difficult to identify, but the adults, they are uh, live of it, so you can easily identify. Okay, sir. How to identify in crocodiles? Crocodiles? Um, crocodiles or uh, in reptiles, the sexing is very difficult and they are uh, sexually monomorphic. The thing is like we have to see the genital organ. So they will be having a cloacal pulp in case of crocodiles. So we need to catch the animal. We need to turn the animal backside. And the under part, there will be, there'll be cloaca. That's a common opening for uh, excretion, reproduction, everything. So for males, there will be a bulge there. That's the penal bulge, you say, or the cloacal bulge. If the bulge is there, that's the male. Bulge is not there, it's a female. Any other doubt? Thank you, have? you, sir. Yeah, welcome. No, sir. Next participant, Sujata Ramakrishnan. Hello, sir. Yes, Sujata. Um, what is the difference between uh, horse and zebra? 
you can keep your mic somewhat away and can you repeat the question what is difference between uh, horse and zebra difference between horse and zebra okay both of them uh, comes under the same uh, family equidae but the zebras are the wild counterparts horses are uh, is the color of the coat that is the black and white in case of zebras and in case of horses they are seen in many colors we say gray uh, as the present horses and the present day horses are came from one of the historic as a persewalski or is found in uh, asian park the main difference is the size difference of the size zebras are very short animals horses okay. are taller ones as zebras size horse or taller okay uh, what is the um, tiger right can you repeat the question can you keep your mic away and uh, ask the question Yeah, you can ask the question. Uh, what is the uh, tiger like? Tiger like. Like like. Tiger life. Yeah. Lifespan of tiger you are asking. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, away from our today's session, but I'll tell you. in wild they live for uh, around 15 years in captivity it's 15 to 20 years okay and uh, we have recorded we have uh, some record we have uh, tigers uh, in nova zoo which has crossed even 30 years wild okay species. okay thank you we'll go to next participant guhan rajendran Hello, sir. Yes, Guhan. Please ask. Do white giraffes are there in Africa? White giraffes. Yes, sir. Um. Yes, some kind of uh, like hypo pigmentation pigmented giraffes are present in the world. We don't say them as a pure white giraffe, but kind of uh, they they lose their pigmentation. Like in case of tigers, we have white tigers, right? Yes. So those kind of. that is a like a uh, kind of uh, pigment loss in uh, giraffes we we do have some kind of pigment loss like hypopigmented giraffes it will be looking kind of white also sir i have another question sir yes, please ask in in the zoo the in the the crocodiles are always opening its mouth sir for a long time okay. how sir okay that's a nice question so crocodiles will uh, open their mouth and keep that's because crocodiles are uh, cold blooded animals so they need to increase their body temperature when the environment temperature goes down so that is the mechanism is called as basking you know what is basking you have heard about the word bask basking gugan are you there in the line i think the participant is not there but i'll tell so okay. that is the mechanism is called as basking so to increase the body temperature the animal will open wide open its mouth and it will be like staying still okay sir thank you welcome i think we can accommodate one more uh, participant next participant please aishwarya janani sir yes aishwarya sir yes please ask sir uh... Sir, uh, crocodiles uh, have uh, nose or gills, sir. Nose or gills? You are asking. Okay. Yes, sir. So crocodiles have nostrils. They don't have gills because only fishes have gills. Crocodiles are reptiles, so they don't have gills. They have, they have nose, nose, and they have lungs. They don't have gills. Okay. Sir, then how they will breathe in the water, sir? Inside water, they won't breathe. they'll come to the surface of the water or to the land for breathing so inside water they'll close their nostril and they'll go okay sir thank you sir welcome Ma
Thank you, Doctor, for the very informative session and taking all of us to African world. So now it's time to open up your creativity and give frame to your thought. Here we provide you an opportunity. The title of today's assignment is Your Favorite African Animal. I repeat, the title of today's assignment is Your Favorite African Animal. You can express your thought in a form of creative art, poem or story and upload it in our website. I would like to repeat the important instruction. Please kindly follow. Participant, to get your e-certificate, you should upload your recent passport size photograph in your assignment page. To visit your assignment page, please log on to aazp.in forward slash vzap. Enter your registered mobile number. You will get an OTP number to your registered mobile. With that, log in to the page and you will find a separate column to upload your photograph. Please kindly upload your photograph to get your e-passport. So tomorrow is a holiday for us, for you. So we will meet again on Monday, sharp at 4 p.m. Monday session will be with Dr. Boone Alvin on the, on the topic, Bass Bad Necessities. Participants are invited to send your feedback about this program in a video or audio or in a written format to aazpzooschool at gmail.com. And also you can share your feedback in, your, in our zoo social media pages. Stay home, stay safe, take care. See you all again on Monday at 4 p.m. Thank you.